Welcome back everyone. My name is Benjamin Nowak and in today's video we're talking about smallmouth bass movements throughout the fall. Now this is one of the most popular styles of videos that I do here on the channel so I hope you guys are as excited as I am for me to break out the whiteboard and talk about how smallmouth transition and move throughout the fall and give you guys the tips that you need to go and have success during the fall months when you're chasing smallmouth bass. Now I know it's Friday night. I know you guys are probably prepping tackle for the weekend but I wanted to get this video out to you so regardless of where you live chasing smallmouth during the fall time months, you can be successful and hopefully put some more fish in the boat. Now, if you guys have never seen one of these videos from me, the way that I do this is I'm gonna start by breaking down what fall fishing is, what defines fall fishing to me for smallmouth bass, a couple of high level tips and overview points, and then we're gonna break into a couple different styles of bodies of water, glacial lakes, rivers, reservoirs, and the Great Lakes, and how I break them down to have success chasing smallmouth bass. That's where the whiteboard comes in handy, that's where I really think a lot of guys get value out of these styles of videos. So if you do, if you enjoy these videos, give it a thumbs up. Without further ado, let's dive into this thing. We need to start by defining what fall fishing is. And I wanna start with kind of my theory on why fall fishing can be so exciting. You're coming off the summertime months, you have warm temperatures, these fish being cold blooded creatures, the metabolism is sped up from the summertime months, but now you have the perfect storm of falling water temperatures, more comfortable oxygenated water for these bass to move shallow, plus the other benefit of fish and bait fish moving into shallower water, making them easier to target, and these bass can feed up really aggressively. Think about yourself in the middle of the summertime. If you're outside a lot, yes, you're sweating, you're burning calories, but the last thing you wanna do is be super active, running around, doing a bunch of things outside. The smallmouth are the same. When that water is super warm, there's not a lot of oxygen in the water, and there's not a ton to really do up in the shallow water areas, these fish aren't necessarily going to be super aggressive and active and feeding and eating everything in sight. But when you fall into that autumn time of year, you like to be outside, you like to be moving around, you like to be enjoying the weather. I think these fish like to do the same thing. So when that water temperature hits that 63 degree mark, which is what I would consider the premier star to fall, that 63 degree mark makes these fish come alive. They want to chase bait, they want to move, they want to pot up and really group up on these bait fish. It's just really an optimal feeding temperature for these fish to go out and, and be aggressive and active. And that for me is why fall fishing is probably one of the most exciting times of the year. Now, if you really start to look at water temperatures and time of day um, and time of year, I'm normally looking at about 63 to 48 degree water temps, as I mentioned prior. This is what I would consider the most peak premier time of year for fall fishing is that 63 degree mark to about 48. A lot of times up here in the Midwest, in Michigan, you're looking at mid to late September, basically through the end of October, would be your premier weeks you wanna be on the water chasing fall smallmouth. Another thing that's great about this time of year is a lot of the boat traffic starts to dwindle off. You're not having a lot of jet skiers, you're not having a lot of wakeboarders, and so the water becomes a little bit less active. There's not necessarily as many guys out there fishing even because a lot of them are spending their time in the tree stands. So you can go out there when there's not a lot of traffic on the water, have success, catch a lot of fish before you have to put the baby away for the winter time. So for me, the fall is super exciting time of year to get out on the water and have success and chase fish and catch a bunch of them as well as some really big fish. Before we pull out the whiteboard, I wanna cover the four commandments of fall smallmouth fishing, the four keys to really, I think, maximize your time on the water and be successful at chasing fall smallmouth. And the very first one, and I would argue the most important one, is to cover water. The biggest thing during the fall is these fish are in transition, they're moving and they're following mobile bait fish. This isn't necessarily a time of year that I think these fish sit in one spot and hang out there for multiple weeks at a time. They're not necessarily feeding as much on bottom baits like gobies and crawdads, although they might still feed on them a little bit. Their main forage is bait fish. It's perch, it's shiners, it's shad, it's cisco, it's smelt, it's those bait fish that are moving up into the shallow waters, that are moving up there to spawn or maybe to get ready for the winter. And so these bass are following these bait fish in. So they tend to be oriented a little bit more up in the water column, mobile with those bait fish. So this for me is one of the biggest keys. Stay mobile, cover water. Fish baits that you can cover water quickly with and be willing to move with them. Key number two plays into covering water and that is following and finding the bait fish. A lot of times if there's not bait in your area, the bass aren't gonna be there. They're very keyed in on the bait fish and they'll orient themselves to where these bait are going and where they're moving to. 
So stay active, use your eyes, use your sonar, use whatever you have to locate the bait fish. And a lot of times the bass are gonna be there. They're up there for one purpose and that's to feed because they're aggressive and they're predatory creatures. They wanna push the bait, they wanna corral the bait and follow it. So look for bait fish and you'll a lot of times have success. Point number three really comes into enjoying my time on the water during the fall. And that is the fact that it's normally easy to pattern fish throughout the fall time months. Now, what I mean by this is a lot of times if you catch fish in a specific depth on a specific type of cover or structure, you can normally run that throughout your body of water and have success throughout the day. This is, however, running into point number four, which means you have to stay open-minded because the pattern is going to change throughout the day. So yes, normally you can pattern fish across your body of water, but as conditions change, as air temperatures rise in the morning or fall off later in the day, you have to be willing to move with these fish. So point three, you can pattern fish pretty easily throughout the day. Point number four, stay open-minded, be willing to change, be willing to move with the bass. If they start out off the drop and then as the sun comes up and the water warms, they push up on it, they're feeding aggressively and then as the temps fall, they wanna move again, be willing and able to follow these fish. So those are my four commandments of smallmouth fishing during the fall. Number one, be willing to cover water. Number two, follow the bait fish. Point three, it's fairly easy to pattern bass throughout the day. However, number four, the pattern is going to change and likely will change hour to hour throughout your day. So be willing to move, stay open-minded and follow what the bass are telling you to do. Now, without further ado, it's time to pull out the whiteboard and share with you guys different styles of bodies of water and how I would break them down during the fall time. So the first style of body of water we're gonna talk about is a river system. Now this is a very simplified system. It's honestly, it's based on a river that's by my house that I fish quite a bit. And it's not a giant body of water, but I think it provides a unique way to break down how fish move throughout the fall time months. So the first thing you need to understand about this drawing is this is a river system. And let's just pretend this is your main lake basin that is either your reservoir, if you guys have a river, you have a deeper section of the river. This is the deeper section. This is your main lake basin if you're fishing a reservoir. This is the deeper area on your river, a lot of times where those fish are heading to winter. These are two creeks that flow in with a small feeder creek or a small feeder ditch that runs into the river system. And this is a basic layout. Now the red, this is what I would consider shallow water. So this is basically your big shallow flats, the shallow edges on the side of the river. And as you can tell, you have your channel swing banks everywhere where your current flows and you have your hard, hard turns. So if we start to break this down, I wanna walk you guys through the progression of bass throughout the summertime into the fall. A lot of times what's gonna happen is these summertime bass are gonna push up into the rivers. They're gonna push up into this faster current areas and they're gonna sit in the deeper holes. The reason for that is those current areas are gonna maintain a little bit better oxygen content and those holes are gonna stay a little bit cooler. Yes, you'll have some fish that stay in the deeper water on the main lake, but a lot of times these fish are very current oriented in river systems. And so they'll wanna sit in the deep holes or in the deep channel swing banks up in the rivers and up in the creeks. As it gets closer to the fall, as the water temps start dropping, your days start getting shorter, these fish are going to start to migrate down your river systems towards the main lake basin. I don't care if this is a small river system, a reservoir, the St. Lawrence River, this is very characteristic. This is something that also happens on the Detroit River and you recently saw on the MLF tournament where Michael Neal won at the mouth of the Detroit River where it flows into Erie. With those falling water temps, these fish that were up in the river or up in St. Clair even to some extent, are gonna push down that river towards the main lake basin. These fish are gonna push out of the creeks, out of the river, and up towards the main lake section of the lake. The reason for that is during the winter time, this is gonna be the most safe water. It's not necessarily gonna freeze all the way to the bottom. There's still gonna be some current pushing through the rivers, and this is gonna be their most stable place that they can hang out during the winter time months. So what you're going to notice is that early fall, these fish up in the creeks are going to be further back and you're going to notice them migrate down. So early fall, I'm going to really focus sort of up on the mid creek area where it pushes out of that really shallow water and starts to widen out like up here and up here. I'm going to focus on these areas. These fish are using this as their highway. They're transitioning down the river towards the main lake basin. So the first place that I'm going to check is up in the rivers. When they're pushing current, I'm gonna check up on the flats. There's a reason for this. When they're pushing current, a lot of times 
on the flats, you're gonna have the faster current. And this is a lot of times also where your current breaks are gonna be up in the river systems. So what you're looking for is faster water because that's the easiest area for the bass to hang out to feed. And you're looking for the current breaks because that allows that fish to sit a little bit easier in the fast, higher current areas to feed on bait fish as they go by. So what I'm gonna be targeting are stumps, these little feeder creeks that push in. When there's slack water, I'm gonna be targeting inside of the creek channel, of the river channel. I'm gonna be targeting these channel swing banks where these fish are gonna be pushed off of and just a little bit more lethargic. And that's where I'm gonna slow down. As we get later into the fall, I'm basically gonna follow this same pattern out into the main river basin. So when I get to like the main peak fall time of year, about that 55 degree range, I'm gonna really target the lower portion of the river into the main river basin. That's where these fish are gonna wanna be pushing into. That's where these fish are gonna be migrating to and where the bait fish are gonna be. So this is gonna be my highest percentage area. Now, one of the nice things about this river is that you have two opposing river currents. And so what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a lot of debris, you're gonna have lines. And this is a bridge here with bridge pilings. A lot of reservoirs that you fish are gonna have bridges that cross the reservoir. And this is a really high percentage area to catch fish. Whether you're on Gunnersville, Pickwick, or you're up here in the north, bridge pilings are a very productive location. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, obviously it's a current break, right? Regardless of where you're fishing, obviously there is a break on a bridge piling where these fish can sit and get out of the current. So that's gonna be a really good seam, right? But there's a couple of other reasons. At the base of that bridge piling, a lot of times there's a high spot. There's like a, a ridge that comes up. And what that allows these fish to do is move up and down very quickly on a literal depth change, not in the water, to feed and get in and out of current very, very quickly. Style of body water number two. This is the Great Lakes. It may not look like it, but I tried to incorporate a variety of different types of cover that would match anything or any style of Great Lake that you fish. So what you're looking at here, this is a river system that pushes into the Great Lake your boat ramp is right here. You have another small river that pushes out right here. And then this is your main lake basin. Just like in the river system, you have your shallow water ridge around the edge, which could be variable. I don't care if it's five foot or if it's 15 foot, depending on where you're fishing. But you have that variable shallow water edge. And then you have your deeper water basin. This is an island at the mouth of the river. You can put it wherever you want, but a lot of times I've found that your best Islands are gonna be at the mouth of somewhere that current is flowing out of. And then you have a big reef here, a ridge, your deep water up here, some random humps in the middle of the Great Lakes. And then you have your rock piles and grass patches throughout. One thing you're gonna notice is that as you get into that fall transition, fish are super spread out. You're gonna have a small school of fish on this rock pile, maybe a small school on this hump, maybe a small school on each and every one of these spots. What's gonna happen though, is these fish are gonna migrate and they're gonna go long distances. They're gonna move long distances to get to where they wanna go. But one thing that's critical is to know that these fish in the river system are gonna to start to push out towards the main lake. That's the reason I started with the river system because it's gonna play into the Great Lakes quite a bit. Your river system fish are gonna to start to push out towards the main lake. Also, these fish that are in here in these cuts and pockets or in these small rivers are going to push towards current driven areas. And current can be made in multiple forms. It can be made from rain, physical runoff running into the river or the river speeding up and running towards the Great Lake or out of these little creeks, or it can be wind driven. And a lot of times that's gonna be the biggest factor on the Great Lakes. It's gonna one, impact where you can fish, but two, dictate how these fish set up across the Great Lakes. So if we start to look at the Great Lakes, there's a variety of different types of cover and structure you can go fish. The biggest thing here is covering water. You need to be willing to move areas and cover a variety of different types of habitat to find your bass and smallmouth where they're living on the Great Lakes. Because one of the biggest frustrations that I have as an angler, and I'm sure you guys have experienced as well if you fish the Great Lakes, is these fish will move long, long distances very quickly based on the current, whether it's river driven and water driven or if it's wind driven. So being willing to change and try different things, different depths, different types of cover and structure is gonna be critically important. Another big thing during the fall time months, and this happens on the Great Lakes more than anywhere that I've ever found, is these fish want to be on variable depth. 
areas. And what that means is they want to have immediate access to deep and shallow water. So what I'm gonna be looking for are areas with hard or steeper breaks, or I'm looking for areas like these ridges or edges of the rock piles where the contour lines are closer together. The reason this is important is because there's so much variation on the Great Lakes, whether it's from wind, whether it's from temperatures, whether it's from predatory fish moving in the area and moving the smallmouth off, they need to quickly be able to go from on top of this hump to off of the side of the ridge, or on top of this reef to off to the side in 20 foot of water. These fish want to have immediate access to deep water, and this is most prevalent for me on the Great Lakes. The very first place I'm gonna look for when I would consider it to start to be fall time, and it's gonna be my biggest indicator of where these fish are at and what they're doing and the season that they're in, is gonna be at outflows from river systems and creeks that flow into the body of water. The reason this is most critical for me is that the perch and the bait fish and other forage types that these bass like to feed on will go up into these rivers and spawn during the fall time months. So what you're gonna have is a push of these fish getting on islands, reefs, and points with current flowing out or flowing in. The biggest thing you're gonna be looking for are the current seams, the current breaks, and the steepest drop. That's my biggest indicator that fall is here and that I can start to push up into these cuts and onto these ridges to catch these fish. So I'll start by looking for the fall time smallmouth around these rivers, around these mouths of areas where water is flowing in and out because that's gonna be my earliest indicator that fall is arriving. Now, after these fish move off of the rivers and off of these current locations, which you'll always have a pot of fish there, I think your bigger fish, however, are gonna move to easier locations where there's easier feeding opportunities. And a lot of times it's gonna to be to these ridges and it's gonna to be to these points. The reason for that is like I mentioned earlier, the immediate access to deeper water while still having access to food source. These fish to me tend to be more stable. The reason for that is that they tend to hang out around there because they can move up and down quickly. The weather doesn't necessarily affect them. If the winds blow in this direction, they can move to the other side of the hump off of that deep water, the other side of the ridge, and they can easily move and adjust based on the current, based on the wind driven current. However, on these locations, they're pretty much fixed to where they have to be. If the wind is blowing out of the north into this river system, these fish here that were on this point or on this island don't have a lot, a lot of variability to where they can go to. Whereas these fish have a lot easier access to get out of that wind, to move into the deeper water, to be in a little bit more stable location for them to hang out. Then what's gonna happen as that water starts to cool off, these fish are really gonna start to disperse. So when you get into like the late fall, your fish are gonna move off of these areas and they're gonna start to push into the deeper water locations. Late fall for me means that I'm gonna start picking up a blade bait and I'm gonna have to start to slow down, but it doesn't mean I have to fish super slow. I'm still gonna cover a ton of water and I'm gonna cover high percentage locations, but these fish are gonna start to spread out and they're gonna to start to move to these reefs and get closer towards their wintering areas. So what I find is that they move away from the river systems, they move towards the main lake, as I mentioned with the river, and they're gonna move on to these deeper water locations. Now, without getting too much into the winter months, for me, the biggest thing that I'm looking for is softer bottom areas, like sand bottom or mud bottom, is it's going to be a little bit more stable. It's gonna be more comfortable for these fish, and they're gonna be able to hang out there and just relax. So a lot of times when I'm looking for these fish in late, late fall, early winter locations, I'm looking for soft bottom areas with a ridge or a hump nearby that these fish, if they get antsy, can push up on and feed. Because to me, these big boulder fields with sand flats or mud flats are one of my favorite places to look for those early winter time, late, late fall fish. So that's how I'm gonna follow these fish throughout the fall into the early winter time months. I'm gonna start at the mouths of the rivers and creeks, then I'm gonna follow these fish to the islands and the ridges. And then I'm going to follow them as they move back out into the deep water and really, really congregate and school up before that winter time push. So that's how I'm gonna follow fish on the Great Lakes. And hopefully that's gonna give you guys a good starting point. Style of body water number three is glacial lakes. And this is by far the one that I get the most questions about. And for good reason. They typically hold giant smallmouth, they a lot of times get a little bit less pressure because they're smaller bodies of water, but they can be really, really tough to consistently catch bass. 
they're hard to catch the bigger fish and they're hard to find those big pods of fish because there's so many areas where those fish can hang out and there's so little to really hold those fish. So if you start to look at this lake, what you're gonna notice is that it's normally a bowl style lake. A glacier came through here and kind of dredged out a couple locations and you might have a little pinch point where it gets a little bit narrower, but for the most part, it's a round body of water. You have a big portion of shallow water that drops off really steep into your deep water basin, which is indicated right here. I'm not gonna draw a whole bunch of contour lines with really steep breaks. I think you guys can understand that a lot of these are very, very sheer drop-offs where it goes from about three and a half to five foot of water into about 20 plus foot of water. With the exception of maybe a couple points where they're a little bit more sloping, like right here and right here, you're gonna typically have pretty hard breaks on these bodies of water. Another thing that can be frustrating about uh, fishing glacial lakes is that fish seem to be kind of unpatternable. And that is true to an extent. And so here more than any other place, you're gonna to wanna to run a bunch of water. You're gonna to wanna to cover as much of this as you possibly can to locate your small giant pod of fish. And what I mean by that is it's typically small locations that hold really big pods and those fish get broken up really easily. So you may have a pod of fish here with 10 to 20 fish in that pod and you catch two or three and they tend to move and they tend to disperse off of that spot. And so a lot of times what happens on a glacial style body of water that's smaller and there's not a lot to necessarily hold these fish is you're gonna have three or four high percentage spots where you can pull up, typically catch one or two that you're gonna have to move. And that's one of the biggest things that I reinforce with you guys is to be willing to move to find and follow these fish. Because with glacial style lakes, when you catch one or two and you start to pull that school, there's not a lot that's holding them there. Once they get into that deep water and you uh, scare the bait and you scare the bass, those fish are really, really apt to move down in that basin where they can just swim and suspend really freely. So be willing to move and be willing to change locations. If I were to go out to a glacial style body of water though, during the fall is gonna be the time of year that I go there. And the reason for that is that they want to push up near or onto the shallower flats. The biggest thing this time of year is these fish realize that the bait fish are starting to move up shallower and the fish think to themselves, they have to go up and they have to feed. One of the crazy things about glacial lakes, however, and spring fed lakes is the water's gonna stay relatively moderate temperature all winter. You're still gonna get some ice, but because it's so deep in the middle of this lake, in the middle of this basin, a lot of times the water temp when they get down in 40, 50 feet isn't gonna be much different in the middle of summer as it is gonna be in the middle of winter. So these fish have to feed up, they have to get fat. They're realizing the bait fish are gonna move up shallow and that's gonna be their biggest indication and driving force. Now what I'm gonna look for on glacial style bodies of water is micro contour changes. And this is where I typically find my best locations. Now what do I mean by this? Well, if you look around this lake, it's pretty featureless. You obviously have some man-made structures because everyone tries to make their lake a lot better. So people toss man-made structures in, man-made structures, and then you get over here, right? And on this half of the lake, there tends to be like sweet spots. So when you're going down this pretty much do nothing style of bank, you might have a very small contour change that turns in a little bit, or a very small point that pushes out just a little bit further. And when you locate all of these micro contour changes, what makes some locations better than others is when you have composition change mixed with your micro contour change. So what I'm looking for are these areas where you might have a little bit more rock on your contour change, or you might have a little bit of grass in your corner of the lake. And that's gonna be something to really pay attention to is what is the bottom composition and what is the secret sauce that makes that spot so good? Because a lot of times when you figure that out, you can drop a waypoint there and that's gonna consistently be a good location, not just in the summertime, not just in the fall, but pretty much all year long. So look for these small micro changes on your body of water. And a lot of times you can have a lot of success on glacial lakes when you find these micro spots. Another big thing that you wanna look for is the corners of the lake. And it sounds really odd, but what you're gonna have happen is that the corners are gonna be one of the most easy areas for these bass to hang out because you might have a steeper break. You might have an area where the point sticks out like right here. These corners are going to be effective locations where bass can easily hang out and it's a really easy target for you guys to fish. And finally, one of my favorite baits to fish on a glacial style body of water is a jerk bait and a swim bait. And the reason for that is not only can you cover water, you can cover varying depths really effectively. 
So the way that I'm going to fish this, and I mentioned this in my how to find smallmouth during the fall video, is I'm going to fish a jerk bait from the outside in. I'm going to sit off of the break and I'm going to cast up onto the flat and bring it off. Because a lot of times what these fish are doing is they're facing towards the shallow water. The bait fish are starting to move up shallow. So what these bass are going to do is sit off of the break and look up and wait for something to pull off the break. They're going to hang out on that edge and they're going to be looking upwards. So by fishing a jerk bait, you can effectively target multiple depths, but also target fish above their head. So jerk bait's a really effective tool, as is a small swim bait or an A-rig. These are going to be great ways to find out where these aggressive fish are sitting. And once you find out the, where the aggressive fish are sitting, you can pick it apart if you absolutely have to with slower moving baits like a Ned Rig or a tube or pick up a blade bait as you get closer to the winter time. But for the most part, fishing those moving baits quickly over a variety of different areas on the lake to figure out the key sweet spots that these fish want to sit. And hopefully that's going to help you guys understand how to follow these fish across glacial, across glacial lakes and have success during the fall. It's not foolproof, but pay attention to the micro nuances, the small changes on your glacial body of water to have success. Because a lot of times those small changes on a featureless body of water are going to make really, really, really big impacts. So that's it, boys and girls. Those are how I follow smallmouth bass movements over a variety of different styles of body of water. A river reservoir, a great lake, and a glacial lake, and that's how I'm going to approach them. Hopefully this is going to give you guys some confidence and some ideas of where to start on your home bodies of water when you go chasing smallmouth bass this fall. And if you have any questions or comments, I try to do my very best at answering all of those, so hit me up down in the comment section down below. I appreciate you guys watching. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Check out some of my other fall fishing videos. I'm going to have some fall actual fishing videos with me on the water coming very shortly, so stay tuned for that. As always, thank you for watching. Take care of tight lines. God bless. Pursue passion.